So say for example, we have y equals square root of x minus two. So this is the graph here. We wanna find the inverse of this graph. So the first thing we do before we wanna we find the inverse is let's just go ahead and state the domain and the range for this graph. So the domain is what the x values can be, right? So in this case, the domain is going to be x is greater than or equal to two. And the range, which are the y values, okay, the vertical component here is gonna be y is greater than or equal to zero. Now when you find the inverse okay, of an equation, you switch the x and the y values and you solve for the new y. But what happens in terms of the domain and the range is that the domain and the range also interchange because the domain is associated with the x, the range is associated with the y. So when you switch the x and the y, the domain and the range are also switching. So the domain and the range for the new function, okay, the domain is now gonna be, instead of the range here, that becomes the domain, x is greater than or equal to zero, and then the range would be y is greater than or equal to two. Okay, so let's go ahead and pay attention to this when we go to find the inverse. So we're gonna switch the x and the y. So now we have x equals the square root of y minus two. I wanna solve for this y right here, so I'm going to square both sides. So I get x squared equals y minus two, and I'm gonna add two to the other side. So that's x squared plus two equals y, and I'm just gonna flip this over so we get y equals x squared plus two. But I'm just gonna put a little comma here, and I'm gonna state the domain, but x has to be greater than or equal to zero. Because if I graph this entire graph here, this is a parabola that's been shifted up two, so it's gonna be up two, and it's gonna be like this. Okay, so there's our parabola. But notice, when you find the inverse of a graph, you're looking at the reflection of the graph over the line y equals x. But you can see we're only interested in this piece, okay, that's being reflected over, so we just want this portion right here Okay, and that's the part that where x is greater than or equal to zero. We don't want this branch over here. So I'm gonna erase this portion. That's not, that's not our inverse graph. We just want that piece right there. So that's an important way to do this, uh, finding the inverse. You switch the x and the y, solve for the new y, but then you have to keep in mind, look at the domain and the range of the original function, switch those. The domain of the inverse function is what the range used to be of the original function. So see how I interchange those? So I hope this helped you understand how to work with uh, inverse functions better. Subscribe to the channel, check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring, and I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.